Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel. Today I'm coming to you with a video about our new manager, Arnie Slot. I am actually recording this. It's the 1st of June today I'm recording this. So today is the first day that he actually goes in and he's in charge of Liverpool. It's when the keys are handed over from Klopp to Arnie Slot. I'm just going to go through it with you to see what we can expect from Arnie Slot, how he'll play, how we'll line up and what the lineup will look like, who will actually be in the positions on the pitch. It could be a long video, I'm not sure. I've got a lot of notes to get through. I've been doing a lot of research. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting through it and giving you the information on Arnie Slot. And thanks everybody who is tuning in and watching this. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, do leave a like on the video and also hit that subscribe button. Honestly, everybody who hits that subscribe button makes a massive difference. Thank you everybody and welcome to the SAS. Now, Let's get into the video. So today being the 1st of June, that marks Arnie Slot's first day in charge as Liverpool head coach. Of course, he's coming in as head coach. He's not going to be the manager, sort of like Klopp was. Um, basically, all that means is that he's going to be all about the football. He's going to be all about training the players and putting them players out on the pitch in a formation that he thinks is going to win us games. Of course, Jurgen Klopp had a bit more responsibility, he had a lot more to do behind the scenes. So hopefully that will actually help Arnie Slot actually get into the role a bit more comfortably because it'll take a lot of the responsibilities off of his shoulders and just sort of, it'll give him more chance to thrive and just, you know, put his ideas to work and he won't have to worry too much about behind the scenes. Of course, with now, all of the um, signings, well, all of the, the backroom staff that have come in, the likes of Edwards and that who have come back to the club, they'll take a lot of them responsibilities on and hopefully just leave Arnie Slot to do what he does best on the pitch. So I'm going to start this video by talking about Arnie Slot and his time at Feyenoord, how that went and what we can expect from that. So I've got some notes here. Obviously, I've, I've made a lot of notes over the last few days. Um, so he joined Feyenoord in 2021 and that season they had just finished um, they finished fifth and they just managed to qualify for the Conference League and it was a scrape to get there um, and that's when Slot joined moving into his first season the 2021-2022 season they finished third so he's gone up two places in the league and they, had, they finished with 71 points it's already an, an improvement but what also um we should know from that season is he got to the final of the conference league the europa conference league it was the first ever conference league unfortunately he did lose the final it was one nil to jose Mourinho's roma that time i think that's quite impressive in your first season it's very reminiscent of what klopp done in his first season at liverpool taking us to the europa league final obviously we lost that one three one i believe it was to sevilla so I'll move on to the second season now. This is the 2022 season, 2023 season. They won it. The era divisa, first place, 82 points, but winning the title in your second season, very impressive. I'm hoping he can do that with Liverpool, you know, winning the title in his second season. Well, I know we can do it in his first season, but that's impressive. And that also 82 points, that's also um, Feyenoord's second highest points tally ever in the league. Traditionally, like like most of the leagues around Europe, it's sort of, you know, it can become a bit of a one horse race. You know, you have the teams that are elite and they win it every year. The same happens in the Dutch league, you know, Ajax PSV win it. It's similar to what's happening in the Premier League now with Man City, they've won it four in a row. PSG in France, they've won it however many times. Bayern Munich did have a stranglehold of the Bundesliga until this year, of course, with Leverkusen. I think they won it nine times in a row. You know, Celtic up in Scotland. It happens, it happens. Um, so for him to get Feyenoord back up there, competing, winning the title, especially against an Ajax and PSV, is great. But did they fall off? Did they just have a poor season? I mean, it's possible. The year That, uh, that year when they won it in 2023, PSV finished second with 75 points. You know, they were seven points clear. So maybe that played into it as well. Maybe other teams around them didn't have such a great season. Some more facts on that win. It was their first win in uh, since 2017. And before that, it was nearly 20 years. It was 1999 that they then last won 
the league before 2017 and then of course to 2023 so it hasn't been a great time for Feyenoord of course like I said though it's a competitive league so to have won it is actually quite promising um, looking forward to seeing if he can actually emulate that in the Premier League in 2023-2024 they finished second however they broke the points tally from the year before again so it was 84 points they finished with second and they, they, like I said they finished second so more points no title that's just the way football goes sometimes in Europe they did go into the Champions League they got knocked out in the group stage they got dropped down to the Europa League that's how it works and again they were knocked out by Roma something about Roma they just can't get over that hurdle um, I I hope that doesn't happen with Liverpool um, because we already have enough teams that we just don't seem to be able to get over that hurdle with like Real Madrid um, I do I feel sick when we have to play Real Madrid we just cannot beat them we make them look good even though on paper we've probably been better teams um, especially in one of them Champions League finals felt we should have had that one but we didn't so I hope that that sort of thing doesn't come into the team again because I really do not like seeing that I think we should just go and play our football not show respect to teams and just batter them when we can do it so that's that's his rap sheet for the three years at Feyenoord I think that's quite impressive he's brought Feyenoord back from you know middle of the table he's brought them back to the top challenging for the title he's won a title and also took them to European competitions he's got to a, um, a European final as well He's got every chance to succeed here now as well. And like I said in the intro, he's a head coach. He's not a manager. So a lot of the responsibility has been taken away from his shoulders. I hope he goes and I hope he slots in there nicely. Excuse the pun. And yeah, we can hopefully emulate some of this um, form and titles that he's won at Feyenoord. And hopefully he can do that in a red shirt at Liverpool. So now I'm going to get into the tactics employed by Arnie Slot. Now... If you look at it on the outside, it's a 4-2-3-1, but I did go back through his whole season last year and I went through all of the formations that he put out and it was more often than not, it was a 4-3-3. If not, it was a 4-2-3-1. It seemed, it depended on who he was playing really. As you know, it's gonna be four at the back. It's gonna be two in a double pivot, three attacker midfielders and one lone striker. I think that would suit Darwin Nunes. I really do. Um, I think he needs that sort of pressure of being alone up there. He needs to be the target man. He needs that pressure because he works better under pressure. When he has time and space on the ball, you know, he seems to overthink things where I think if he's the target man and there's balls being fired into him and he has that bit more pressure, I think that will bring the best out of him. He does seem to work better under pressure. So I think that, you know, the 4 2 3 1 would suit Darwin Nunes anyway. So Slot employs a double pivot in midfield. That would be, in my opinion, it would be Endo and McAllister. They're well suited to that. But it could be anybody as if they're a defensive midfielder or a centre midfielder. It's a combination of the two. Put them together and it's their job to link the defence to the attack. Um, also, what Slot does like to do is, which we're all well used to, is a very, very high press, organised high press, which we've come accustomed to under Jürgen. I don't think it worked out so well this season. I don't know what it was. I it depend on the team. Some games it seemed to work all the time. Other times it, it just didn't work and we had to change tactics. I think that's where this formation will actually make us better because it's an opportunity for change. So with that, yeah, it's defending, it's defending from the front foot. It's like what we've seen with the likes of Mane and Firmino and Salah when they were prolific when they were turning over possession high up the pitch I'm, I'm hoping that's what we're going to see more of in this coming seasons under slot so speaking of defense slot also employs a 4-4-2 when it comes to defending so that means that the likes of the wingers so say it's diaz and salah they'll drop back not uncommon to what we've seen already on the under klopp and they'll just aid the defense um so it's like a 4-4-2 and then also it um, say you have Nunes up top and then Saboslai in the middle attacking midfield position that would lead them to up top. So that when you turn over possession, you can you have two outlets, you can find them. And then when they have 
possession, you regain the possession, regain control, then the formation then resets back to a 4-2-3-1. So overall, I think the 4-2-3-1 formation will suit us a little bit better. It's a different option as well, so it'll be a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. We know we can already do a 4-3-3. 4-2-3-1 will give us a bit of variety, you know, when we need something different to break down teams. Um, or maybe we're lacking a bit defensively. The 4-2-3-1, I think, will provide a bit more defensive stability, which I'm hoping will happen because we do need it sometimes. We do look a bit poor defensively. And hopefully with this formation and these tactics, we can go on and actually take it that next step. So I am really... This is what I said in the intro. I'm getting really sort of excited learning about it and just researching it and how he plays. I can see how he will slot in really nice and be able to take Liverpool to the next level, if, if even if there is the next level. But yeah, so inside I'm quietly building a bit, little bit of confidence. So now let's get into signings, potential signings, potential outgoings, of course, both will happen over the course of the summer. Some we don't want to see, some we do want to see. So let's get into that. So I have a massive list of potential incomings and then potential outgoings. A lot of it is nonsense. It's obviously the papers, it's the rumor mill. It is in full swing right now. It is going crazy so much bullshit on the internet on the radio in the papers everywhere but what i've done is i have gone through i i have i have wrote them all down well not all of them there's probably a few missing but get them in the comments if i've missed anybody or anybody you'd like to see in a liverpool shirt get them in the comments um so yeah these are the incomings uh obviously we're not going to sign all of these i can realistically i see us signing three players um, we'll get to that. So, potential incomings. The first one on the list is Edison from Atalanta. He's a 24-year-old centre midfield, and he is that number six. He would replace Endo. And he had an unbelievable season with Atalanta and played a starring role in the Europa League final. Of course, they won that. According to Tuto Sport, he would cost about £40 million for Liverpool to sign him this season. Again, I do have the names of some media outlets who have actually sent, said this. Take it with a grain of salt. I always do. Much like Arnie Slot coming in, I took it. The, the manager chase. I took it with a grain of salt. Who came in? I will do. I will. I will believe it when it happens. And the same with signings. I will believe them when I've seen them signed a contract and they're in a Liverpool shirt. So yeah, and also these media outlets may not be the most reliable so bear that in mind as well as we go through these um, then there's been links with rodrigo from real madrid obviously the 23 year old forward apparently 65 million could get him real madrid must be desperate for money if they're looking to sign uh sell him um apparently he is a bit unhappy um maybe maybe he is maybe he isn't i just don't see that happen happening I mean, he does look like a decent player, but I just don't see that one happening. Then there's Danny Olmo, uh, RB Leipzig, 26-year-old, attacker midfield, £50 million. Um, then there is William Pacho from Frankfurt, 22-year-old centre-back, about £45 million could pry him away from there. Then we have Piero Hincapié from Leverkusen, again, another 22-year-old centre-back. Apparently, £35 million could get his signature. Then on to Napoli, and I'm going to butcher this name, but it's Kvica Kvaratskhelia. You know, that little left winger, the Georgian Messi, they call him. When we played them, he was outstanding. He does look like a phenomenal player. He just seems to go missing for large parts of the season. Um, much like the next person on the list, I'll... Farrett Skellia could cost about £80 million as well. That is, that's the downfall with him. So the next player on the list is Crescencio Somerville from Leeds. Another one, I don't have much information about him, but I talked to a Leeds fan 
and he says he's a great player on his day but he could play a good game and then he go missing for six we don't need that we have Jota to do that um we have a lot of players who do that obviously Jota through injury but I, I just hate seeing it now we need players who are going to be fit and at their best for 30 games a season 40 games a season not for five or six so I don't see them happening either the goalkeeper from Feyenoord slot wants to bring him with him um Bilo I believe his name is I might be butchering that name as well if Bilo does come that would mean the likes of Callagher will be going of course Callagher has publicly come out and said he wants to be number one somewhere now that's how his career will develop and then there's the likes of Watkins um, from Villa 70 million pound Osiman from Napoli he could very well be up on 100 million pound then there's Elise from Crystal Palace Polina from Fulham Isak from Newcastle and Sané from Bayern Munich again guys I have probably missed some oh I've missed Kudus as well from West Ham these are all potential people that Liverpool have been linked with like I said that rumor mill is massive um, if I was to give you people who I actually think we will sign if we do sign anybody I think it will be Hincapia from Leverkusen it will be Edison from Atalanta and then I think it will be like an attack attack minded player I wouldn't mind seeing Watkins I'm a big Watkins fan if you watch the channel you'll know I'm a big Watkins fan Isak or Sané maybe Sané is apparently ready to part ways with Bayern again these are all rumors but like I said I could see Edison Hincapia and then an attack minded player that's the three sort of players that I think we need to sign definitely a center back definitely a midfielder and an attacker um, and the reason for that is because of the potential outgoings that I have right here so Set van der Berg is first up on the list because he has actually already been linked with Brentford and Southampton interested in mate, taking his signature. Uh, Liverpool have put a price tag of £20 million pound on him. Kelleher, um, again, another player who I think he adores Liverpool. Um, I absolutely adore him as well. I don't think there's any Liverpool fans who don't adore him. Incredible player, but obviously to move on in his career now, he wants to be a number one somewhere and I think I think he's now what 24 is he so he's getting to that age now where he wants to be doing that and I completely understand that um, I don't think there'll be any hard feelings between the two parties but um, let me know what you think Keller is worth in the comments I've got him down as sort of 30 to 40 million pound is what I'd like to see for him because he is worth that but again young goalkeepers they don't really make that money do they so we'll see but again in the comments guys let me know what you think uh Cuevin Keller is worth then of course there's the Diaz to Barca rumors um another one I want you to tell me what he's worth and what you take for him in the comments um his dad is seems to be a massive advocate for getting Diaz over to Barca I think he's worth about 60 million pound maybe 70 million pound he does frustrate me an awful lot he does he does an awful lot of work to get a very little end product and he requires chance after chance before actually doing anything special but he does have a lot of endeavor he does get into good positions it just needs to the finish the final product just needs to be polished and just needs to be better um, if Barca did give a decent amount of money for him I would accept um, and look to replace him um, so this is why I was going on about attack minded players um, we do need to start looking at attackers which leads me on to the next one as well Salah to Saudi to the Saudi Pro League um, I don't know what team it is 100 million if 100 million comes in would you take it again another one let me know in the comments would you take 100 million for Salah and replace him with Osman, um Elise Sané well Sané plays the other side but do you know what I mean who would you um who would you replace Salah with would you let him go do you think Liverpool will keep him for another season I personally think Liverpool will keep him for another season I think he sees himself at Liverpool for another season at least also that would mean that Salah would leave next season most likely on a free transfer because it'll be the end of his contract so do you take 100 million for him now or do you let him go free next season but have another season with him even if he leaves next 
next season, you still have to be looking right now to replace him because he's hard to replace. There's players available now and also players need time to get used to the style of play, get used to the league, depending on where they're coming from. That's something that all needs to be considered. And well, I just hope that this transfer window answers a lot of questions and we get a lot of good business done. Also on this list, I have Joe Gomez because is he unhappy at Liverpool? I'm not sure. I've heard little whispers or I've read little whispers that he might be unhappy. He might look for a move. Um, I'm not sure why, because he played an awful lot of football this season. Um, he's absolutely adored by Liverpool fans. It just He just needs to score a goal. That's all we need is for Joe Gomez to score one goal. Um, and then also Andrew Robertson. There's been links with him to Bayern Munich um, for about £50 million, I think. So, you know, if the likes of these players go, there's a lot of like first teamers there so or squad players. So you need to be looking at replacing them. And that's why I think the potential incomings list is absolutely massive. Like I said, I believe the likes of Edison, Hincapia, and then an attacking player will come in. Maybe more depending on what goes out and also depending on how much um, funds that, uh, we can make from the sell sale of players as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through formations of how I think Slot will line up in his first season. I've added some new signings in there. I've gotten rid of a few players and I'll also do a di few different formations for the different competitions. So, you know, like when we rotate players, how I think we'll line up for like the League Cup compared to the Premier League, for instance. I'll go for a few of them with you right now. So let's get into a couple of formations that I think we could see potentially under slot. Of course, this is depending on if we actually make certain signings. I have put them in. This is all speculation mixed with um, all players that we already have. So the first one I have, I'll put up on the screen right now. It's Allison, Robertson, Van Dijk, Incapia, Trent. Then in the pivot, you've got McAllister and Edison. Then in the midfield three is Gakpo on the left, Soboslai through the middle, Salah on the right, and Nunes up top. Like I said, this formation I think would really suit Nunes. Um, also, I do like seeing Gakpo playing in from the left, so I think that would be more suited to him. And also, that paves the way for Diaz to leave if those Barca rumours are to be believed or if they come to anything, anything true, shall we say. Um, also, Soboslai in that middle attacking midfield role I think is ideal for him as well I think that would get the best out of him too so the next one is as follow again Allison in goal I don't see anybody coming in to replace Allison like for me he's the world's number one keeper there's no replacement for him you know all we need to do is replace our backup keeper I think if Kelleher does leave so again we've already got this back four it's Robertson Van Dijk, Canate, and Bradley. With that, what I've done is, which I think Slot might want to experiment with, is having Trent in midfield as part of that double pivot alongside Endo could be defensively very solid. Then I've gone with Gravenberg in the middle of the midfield because I want to see more of him. I liked what I seen last season and I just enjoy watching him play. And I think maybe that sort of role would suit him a bit better. He does like to get forward. He does... He is quite tricky on the ball. Um, then I've gone with Elliot on the right-hand side, Diaz on the left-hand side, and Jota up top. Of course, this is a lineup that we can already field. Again, I'd like to see more of Elliot, more of Gravenberg, and provided nobody leaves, this is another potential lineup that could start the league and could win the majority of games defensively strong, especially if Trent can actually adopt that midfield role and become part of the attack, but also help out defensively. I think it could be a winning formation. Now this is a League Cup, FA Cup um, formation that I drew up. Um, again, if you look at the goalkeeper, it's the Beadlow from Feyenoord. If Slot brings him from Feyenoord, of course, it's an another bit of speculation. But if Kelleher does leave, we do need to get a backup for Allison. And if Slot is already looking at him to come, maybe that's going to happen. So then, of course, into defence, I have Simicas, Hincapia, Kwanzaa, Bradley. Kwanzaa, off the back of another amazing season. Really 
probably our second best centre back at the moment. Didn't see enough from Canate last season. Gomez, Gomez was pretty decent, um, but he didn't really get to play centre back. He filled in for all of the injured players, which again is great to have um, a versatility player, utility player like that. Um, I'd just rather see Gomez play as a centre back. It's his preferred position. But if not, we do have Kwanzaa, and well, he is the perfect deputy to Van Dyke. Um, again, this is a cut formation, so the likes of the big guns would be dropped. I can see a lot of rotation. Um, so the likes of Bradley coming in at right back, um, Trent and McAllister this time in the double pivot, and then in the midfield, I've gone with Kudus. If we sign Kudus from West Ham, that is. Again, another bit of speculation. Gakpo in the central role, Elliot out on the right, and Jota up front, because we do have options up front. Um, just, of course, if Diaz leaves, if Salah leaves, they do need to be replaced. The likes of Kudus could come in and do a really good job on the left wing, or the likes of Elise could come in and do a really good job on the right wing. There is options there right now. Um, also, Liverpool have just recently been linked with Newcastle's Guimaraes as well. He'd be more of a central sort of midfielder. Um, there are options. Um, and again, all of these players can, you know, as we get later on in the, the competition, you know, Nunes can come in up top, Salah out on the right, Trent back into right back, um, Endo McAllister starting midfield, Soboslai starts in the, the attacking midfield, you know, Robertson starts on the le at left back, Van Dyke starts in there. You know, this is all, it's all just a bit of me just playing with formations of what is possible, but you can literally take any player out and put any player in there. Um, that's the, the joys of this. And now this is the best of the best. This is the Champions League. This is what you want to win the Champions League. You have to start your big guns. You have to win every game. You have to be perfect. This is what I think will happen. Um, this is with the three signings that I suggested, um, uh, center back, a midfielder, and an attack-minded player. I've got to incorporate all three of them because I think if we do sign them, they're going in there right now to get in that team like I said I didn't see enough from Canate last season he's supposed to be our second best centre back I needed more from him um, when he was well he was injured when he was fit he was just off form maybe a bit of rest is needed but I think we should sign the likes of Incapia maybe somebody else maybe another centre back but somebody who's going to go in there and compete straight away for that place so this lineup is Allison, Robertson, Van Dyke, Hincapia, and Trent. Then in the double pivot, that little Brazilian wonder kid from Atalanta, Edison, McAllister. Um, then into the midfield, we've got Kudus on the left, Saboslai in the middle, Salah on the right, and Darwin Nunes up top. I think that is uh, that's a massive lineup. If we could sign them three players, that really does make Liverpool a better team. And, you know, on paper, it's hard to make Liverpool a better team. Um, but this, I think that's what does it. And I think that is, the, that's the elite lineup. If we make the free signings, they slot straight in there. And that's how we line up, especially in Champions League. Say you get to the Champions League final, this is the team that will be playing it. So again, a lot of speculation. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like I said, I'll, I will do... Um, videos on signings when they happen but at the moment it's all speculation because nothing is concrete and nothing has happened yet so that's absolutely everything that I've learned about Arnie Slop after doing a deep dive into sort of his football philosophy and what his achievements over the course of his career and yeah I'm I'm just really eager to get into the new football season now I know one's just finished so we've got a long wait probably 10 to 12 weeks or so i just really like club football i want to get into it i know we've got the euros but i just really want to get into the season and just see how we perform and just you know get behind the team again so again everybody who tuned in that's going to be it from me thank you ever so much for tuning in if you haven't already please do leave a like on the video i just it just really makes me happy watching people seeing the views go up and getting likes on my videos and if you haven't already and you really do like the content hit that subscribe button um that is the most important you could do i'm trying to build a little bit of a community so that you know the live streams are better there's more people to interact with 
I do like I do live streams and I do like talking to people from all around the world. So when people get into my comments and my chats and my live streams, I really do like it. I really do enjoy just getting to meet you guys and learn a bit about yours and just talking football, get your opinions on Liverpool and whatever thoughts you have on Liverpool and the games. I just really enjoy it. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, please do hit that subscribe button. And thank you again. And yeah, hopefully now this is the rise of the red machine under any slot and hopefully he becomes as unbearable for oppositions as the Terminator. And yeah, until next time, not the fucking Reds.